What's happening everyone, Freedom of Fantasy from Holistic Songwriting, welcome back to Pulling the Lever. Today we're going to talk about how to structure an album. This is something one of my patrons asked me over on patreon.com. I think it's a really good question and something I thought a lot about when structuring my own album. I didn't follow all of these uh, pieces of advice that I'm going to give you today um, because I still think it's an artistic work. So, you know, as it is with all the rules that I give you on this channel, you know, take it with a grain of salt. It's, you're still an artist and you still have to make some uh, personal decisions for how you want to do things. But um, just as a sort of general guideline, I think this is really useful. And I think the advice that I'm going to give you in this video is useful to you and important even uh, to you, even if you are not planning on writing an album ever. Because I think the, the structure that we're going to talk about is not necessarily the most important thing. I think the most important thing we're going to be talking about is the different kinds of songs you want on an album. The basics of this is storytelling. We really want to tell a story. And so the structure of an album is kind of similar to the structure of a film. And so you're going to hear me use words that you otherwise might know from screenwriting or from, um, you know, from book writing, things like that. So um, we're going to talk about a 12 song record or maybe a 13 song record. I know this is kind of old fashioned. I know there's a lot of albums now that are 10 songs. But then again, Taylor Swift just released an album that's 18 songs. So there's not really any rules. Basically, the same principles still apply. What we want is kind of a three act structure. The first song on your record is probably going to be your intro. Now, that might be a dedicated song that's just a little bit of sound design that is supposed to lead us into the next song on the record, or it's a complete song of its own. Now, what I'm talking about here is really an instrumental kind of intro. The purpose behind this song is really to lead us into the sonic soundscapes of the record and to set us up for what's about to come. It's there to create tension and to basically get us ready for the rest of the album, to put us into a certain mood through sound design. Next, we have the opener. This is a hugely important track on your album, if not the most important track on your record. You want to pick the song that would work the best live. You want to have a song generally that is very energetic, very singable, that has a lot of energy. The opener is there to just impress people. That's really what this song is about. The, the point of this whole song is to win people over, to make people go, wow, this is crazy. I've never heard anything like this. This is one purpose that you have with the song. And the other side of it is getting people. So the one side is getting people hyped up. The other part of it is setting up what this whole record is going to sound like. So kind of saying like, hey, this is our sound. This is what's different about us. Next, we have the first single. Um, this is often in position number two or three. If we look at the um, at the intro, the instrumental intro. Um, and this would be really where act one in our three act structure begins. This is kind of the exposition, the setup for the rest of the record. And it's kind of there to introduce us to the actual world of the record. So the opener was really like the, the out there piece. Like this one, is, it's just a crazy piece of music. The first single is the one that kind of cements like this is the sound. This is what we're going for. This is our commercial side. The most important single on the record in terms of the structuring is, is the first single here. And by the way, if I say first single, that means in order on the record, not necessarily in how you release those singles. That's quite a different story because typically in, in terms of release schedule, you want to release your most out there, your most um, engaging song first, which is quite a different thing. Here for your record, you want to pick the song that reflects what the rest of the album is going to sound like the best. Next, we have song number three, which I call the banger. Now, this is the song after the first single. So someone goes to the record store, listens to your record, and they're like, oh, I want to hear the single. This is my favorite song. So they go to song number two and they listen to it uh, in all its, you know, the whole song. And then the next song that comes on better be good. This is why I call that the banger. That's the song that's really got to convince them that they're in the right place and that they should buy this record. Basically, what you want to have here is kind of like the single. It, ideally, obviously, just as good as the single that we just heard. And it's just a track that's just on the album. So basically, uh, it's your way of, of telling people, hey, this record is, is just as good as the single you just heard. And obviously, the single is our best track. So this whole record is just all killer, no filler. That's basically your promise with that song. That's kind of the idea. That's your marketing for the rest of the album, if you will, in that way. Then we have songs four and five, and these I call light fillers. Now, that doesn't mean they're uh, not serious or anything like that. 
Again, doesn't mean that they have to be bad necessarily, um, but these are two positions where you can pretty much put anything, so you're not as, as tied down as with a lot of the other positions in your record. So this is where you can put your songs that maybe are a little bit more experimental. It's a position where you can where you have a little bit more leeway, kind of like a bridge in a in a in a single, right? Um, it's still a single, so it still better be commercial. But at the same time, um, you have a little bit of freedom there and can try out some more experimental things. And that's kind of what we have here. So light fillers one and two go in positions four and five. Then we have position number six, and this is again a hugely important one. This is your second single. Um, this is the start of act two, the rising action, the confrontation. This is where things get really heated. And so typically on, on rock albums, for example, these are the heaviest songs of the record. And this is the case with my, with my album, for example. Song number six is gonna be the heaviest track on the entire record. So um, this is where you really wanna show people that there's a kind of a different side to what you're doing as well. Because the next song, is song number seven. This is what I call the switch. In uh, screenwriting, we call this the midpoint. This is the point of no return where things turn for the worse, right? Where uh, a character is too deep uh, into the story so that they can't return anymore. And this is kind of what we want to do with the record as well. We want to have a kind of midpoint that changes things around somewhat. So this is kind of uh, splits the record in two. We have the lighter first half, which is there to get people excited. And then we have the darker second half, which is there to get people invested and to emotionally win them over. Also note that it is after the second single. So again, we have this thing of if someone goes to a record store and listens to your second single, song number six, and they listen all the way through, the next song better be, better be as good as song number six, right? So again, this is your song where you switch things around. So pick a song that kind of shows a different side of what you're doing. Then we have songs number eight and nine, and those again are fillers. And in this case, I call them dark fillers because again, they're supposed to show your other side. They're supposed to show your more involved, your darker side. So there's a kind of like a fun side in the beginning. And then there's the side when we get a little bit more down to business, when we get a little bit more serious. Songs number eight and nine. And then finally, we have song number 10 and 11, and this becomes our third act, or the denouement, uh, or resolution act. And uh, song number 10 is often single number three, um, and uh, song number 11 will be your closer. So, for the rest of the album, for, for the last two or three songs, you typically have a little bit of leeway. There's, there's really two approaches that I see happening a lot. So we're kind of trying to find a an ending to our story that kind of resolves, that kind of has like a happy ending, or we could do a sad ending as well. The The way that I really like, and that's maybe just because of my personality, I like the, 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 the tragic endings a little bit better. So what I like to do is uh, the third single, so song number 10, is gonna be uh, a little bit more of a dramatic song. So maybe a little bit slower, a little bit heavier, a little bit darker. And then song number 11 is the ballad of the record. You know, something that's, that's really kind of, you know, pulling the energy back a couple of steps, and it becomes this really kind of, uh, small and kind of a little bit of a different arrangement, something else. It's like the, again, like the bridge of a song where we really kind of try to explore a different energy of the song. So on my record, for example, it's almost a folk song that happens here. It's still a rock song and it's still, there's still some stuff happening there. But um, when you hear it for the first time, you're thinking, wow, this is like completely different than the rest of the record. That's the idea behind it, at least. The effect that you want these songs to have is, um, uh, an, a feeling of nostalgia, and I like the, the term nostalgic because it embodies a mix, a perfect balance of sadness and happiness. That's kind of what I'm trying to go for with my with my last or my last two songs. I'm trying to go for something that is very dramatic, very sad. I want happy tears. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Think of a band that you're really into, seeing them live on stage. The last song that they played better be one where you can cry happy tears. You're really sad that you that they're leaving. This is their last song, goddammit. But at the same time, you're super happy that you got to be here and share this experience with all these other people around you, right? That's kind of the feeling that we want to go for with our closer. So song number 10 would be the nostalgic dramatic song, right? And for that, I have some examples like uh, Mirrors by Justin Timberlake is the perfect closer to a record. In my opinion, it's the perfect closer. Um, because it is, it is very, it has a very nostalgic kind of feel. Everyone is going to cry when that song comes on at the at the, at the concert in the very last position, right? Um, but uh, if you want to go for a comedy ending, what you want to do is after you have your nostalgic song, you want to do one more song that is high energy and pumps the audience up for the next time 
they see you on stage, they buy your next record, whatever. So you wanna get them pumped for the very next contact with them, basically, right? For example, if you want them to buy your next record as well, uh, you could put a song here that, that just has a little bit more energy so they, so, so they don't end up feeling sad after they heard your third single, right? Song, song number 10. Um, that's kind of the idea behind this, really. Now, why did I say all of this is important if you're not even writing a record? I think it's important because what I've just given you are a couple of blueprints for songs that you can use regardless of whether you're writing an album or not. Because um, a lot of people think there's just one great song, but that's and there's just one way to write a great song, and that's just not true. There's so many different kinds of songs; they all have their different purpose. And writing with a purpose in mind really helps you write um, good songs. I think because it's really difficult to write a song that works for all situations. It doesn't make sense, right? You won't be able to write a song that works in a lounge situation as well as on stage to get people to cheer. So. Um, let's talk about these different songs one more time and why I think they're important to you as a songwriter regardless of whether you're going to use them on an album or not. So there's the opener. Again, this is a great live song. This is the first song people play when they come on stage. These are often songs that get performed at every single concert. Not, not a lot of people write these kinds of openers for bands. And the songwriters that do sometimes make a pretty good buck off of it because these are the songs that bands play live. and playing live is still a great way of income for songwriters. Then we have uh, the singles, obviously we don't have to talk about those. We got the banger, which is basically another single that just didn't make the cut quite enough. You know, it's it's it almost made the single status, but so we put it in position number three. Then we got uh, the switch, which is a song that we can use to uh, show the other side of this artist. And we got the closer. Uh, so those are the, the three songs that I suggest you take away from this. It's the opener, it's the switch where we can turn things around a little bit, where we can take it, take things from uh, light to dark. And then we have the closer, which is there to make people feel sad that you're leaving or uh, to give them some new energy for their way home. That's pretty much it. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I don't really have a, a big finale, I guess, but um, hopefully this was very useful to you. If you like to learn more about this kind of thing and if you wanna ask me questions, if you wanna send in songs for feedback and you can do that every single week, you can do that over on Patreon, patreon.com slash holistic songwriting. Um, you can download uh, freebies in the description below this video. Uh, you can check out the courses on the website. There's Plenty of stuff to do. Check out the other YouTube videos on this channel if you haven't already. Subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, um, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and stay gefährlich.